The palm cockatoo dates back tens of millions of years to when Australia was covered in rainforest. He's the granddaddy of them all. Little was known of this mysterious bird until Steve Murphy began his study. And the only way to find them in this rainforest is to mimic their calls. huge repertoire of calls that they use in display. The hello call they make is, is part of the display. It seems to be made almost as if they're saying hello to their, their, their partner or their, their neighbouring cockatoos. Unlike other cockatoos, palm cockatoos don't live in flocks. They pair up with a mate and seem to stick with them for life. and they can live for up to 90 years. One cockatoo in captivity had her first chick at 54. But to get the girl, the male must be a man of property with a portfolio of good nesting hollows. And if he wants any chance of mating, she must be persuaded that he's strong enough to build her several magnificent nests. All the elements of a palm cockatoo display are designed to draw attention to that massive beak. The blushing of the cheek patch, the wing spreading which makes them bigger. It's all designed to show other cockatoos that they're strong and the pinnacle of their strength is in their beak. Essentially, he is trying to prove that he is a blue chip investment and that she can feel comfortable putting all her eggs in his basket. They join up every morning and afternoon at these nest hollows. And they catch up on the day's events and it really does sound like you're, you're listening to a, an old married couple sometimes. I mean, the analogy continues. It's just like humans and the pride that humans have in their houses. Palm cockatoos are exactly the same. But the most amazing display of all is when males bring back to the nest a small stick and they actually drum on the side of the nest. Maybe it's because palm cockatoos live so long that they have time to learn so much. But it's a rare thing anywhere in the animal world to see a tool being used quite this deliberately. I think it's very likely that the female watches these drumming displays and can tell something about either the male or the nest tree at which he's performing. You know, there's something that she's picking up in the way that the drumming sound resonates inside the hollow. We don't really know, but I mean, she watches very intently. The choosy males will try two or three different drumsticks before they settle on one that they really like. When they actually perform the drumming display at the nest, it does seem to have a rhythm. But when he's finished with it, He'll often sit at the edge of the hollow and splinter up the stick and add it to the nesting platform that's inside the hollow. If the female is impressed, she will walk down and join him at the entrance of the nest to see if it's good enough to breed in. With the hollow approved, they can fly off to have a morning snack. The local birds gather at trees that are in fruit. 
that really powerful beak that palm cockatoos have, which is by far the biggest beak of any of the cockatoos. It allows them to eat foods that other cockatoos and other animals in general just simply can't access. I think palm cockatoos are very intelligent. You've only got to watch a pair courting at their nest or, or a male fashioning a drumstick to realise that there is complicated thought going in that, that big head of theirs. Of course, these regal palm cockatoos are not the only clever ones. All parrots are smart. Whereas most birds only learn when they're young, parrots continue through long lives to accumulate knowledge and pass it on to their mob. Combine this brain power with their crafty beaks and agile toes, and it's almost as though parrots were pre-adapted for this changing continent. From the drying of the land to the arrival of Europeans, these brightest of birds have thrived, making Australia the land of parrots.